Yo, real quick, comic fam, join me over on Whatnot today at 1 p.m. We brought back to press the very first CW official retailer variants. Yeah, Stephen Amell foils, Kevin Smith foils, green arrow logo foils. I also have a Mighty Morphin Power Rangers secret drop, but enough of that. Enjoy the video, and I'll see you today, Sunday, on Whatnot. Boom. This is how you get comic books below fair market value. Let's get into it. Over five years straight covering the most trending comic books in the marketplace. And it's my birthday and I only want one present from every comic fan member. You gotta hit the like button and subscribe so you don't gonna be here every single week covering this rapidly moving marketplace. Number 10 on the list, Void Rivals number four, the one in 25 Karen Darbo variant. This is seeing $50 average sales and high raw sales for $85. Brand new this week and it's a spoiler variant. I think this is selling for double ratio because it was a spoiler variant, which means that the publisher didn't announce the cover in full till very last minute, which means that LCS is didn't go all in because I think they would have had they known that it was gonna feature a Decepticon shockwave on the cover. That's why we saw some action around Void Rivals number one when that debuted earlier in the summer because uh, there was a stealth introduction of uh, the Transformers in this book that was not advertised in any way to feature Transformers. And there's only a few covers of this run that actually have any Transformers characters on them, which is why, again, that's one reason why we're seeing this particular issue spike up higher than the rest. Hype is at an all-time high. Transformers comes out in a few days. G.I. Joe is coming out soon. Because there's very few opportunities to get a Transformers cover in regards to this Energon universe being created by Robert Kirkman, being brought to you by Skybound, I think that you may want to be a little patient on this particular variant. It may see some drops because there's going to be a lot of competition very soon. You know that there's going to be a lot of covers featuring Transformers and Decepticons alike. As you probably know by now, on Key Collector Comics, they release a trending 20 list of 20 comics that are trending every single week. We picked 10 of those to make this video, so if you go download the app and use code TOM101 for a two free week paid version of the app, you can check out the Trending 20 this week and notice that there are several other Transformers keys and Avoid Rivals books in particular. Support what we do. Find out about the other books that are trending. You may own a few of them. Do not overpay for this next book. Number nine on the list, Fish Flies number two. This is a great new book from Jeff Lemire, and it was recalled this week. We are seeing $6 average sales, which is the cover price. We are seeing high raw sales for $30 and a set of cover A and cover B done beautifully like by Kelly Jones, one of my favorite Batman cover artists, $50 for the set. Now, the reason why people shouldn't be overpaying for this book is... It has been recalled technically. No one has to return anything. No one has to destroy anything. And we're getting replacement copies of the corrected versions. Notoriously, we see books like this get really, really hot out the gate. People pay a ridiculous amount of money. And then once they realize how many of them are out there, the prices drop drastically. I'm going to give you three examples of books that this has absolutely happened with. We have Jenny Zero number one. Issue number Number one actually had pages from issue number two in it. That book is regularly selling for twice cover price. We also had the Marvel Rising Spider Girl and Ms. Marvel variant. It had repeated pages in there that's available for cover price and it spiked to almost $25 and made it on the trending 10 when it came out. We also have one of my favorites, Saga number 41. It was issued too dark. It was recalled and they reissued it. That book was major hype in the saga world. People were paying $20, $25 and again, cover price right now. So if you want this book because it's an anomaly, buy it. But wait, do not pay $30 for this book. It is not worth it. The error in particular in this book is on page 17, which is an all black page that just says the word crunch. And it was accidentally duplicated on page 24. And so whatever was actually supposed to be on page 24 is presumably not in the book. So therefore, it makes sense that they would want to recall this and issue a new printing, which is actually going to hit shops next week. So if you are a Fish Flies reader, don't worry. Next week, you'll get the right version of the book. Jeff Lemire is a prolific writer, Gideon Falls, Sweet Tooth on Netflix. So there's a bit of hype as it pertains to this new horror run that I didn't add to my pull list. But after seeing this error hit the list and reading about the synopsis, I'm going to actually go back and read it because I do like Jeff Lemire. There is some spec potential, but I do like what you're saying here because there's a word of caution. 
It depends not just on the error, but the severity of the error, and then what happens after the fact. And the fact that you didn't have to destroy the books, show proof, means that stores who got them are going to be faced with the question, the ethical dilemma of, do I get rid of them or do I still sell them? And we're seeing them sell. This next book on the list is the first appearance Bronze Age key book that has dropped over $2,000 since its all-time high. We're talking about Ms. Marvel number one from 1977. This book is hitting $130 average sales, and I'm looking at a $732 9.8 sale. But wait for it. We have some caveats to make about that price. But the heights this book reached was plus $3,000. In 2018, this book hit above three k five different times. When the first Captain Marvel movie came out, there was a lot of people specking on Carol Danvers. So we saw a lot of sales. Again, at least five sales over $3,000. We were seeing this more regularly around $2,000 in 2019, all the way up until 2021, the comic book boom. So the fact that this is so far down is really, really impressive. It's a 150% increase in copies sold this week. And even though we just reported a $732 sale, the real market value is actually closer to 1000 We are seeing buy it nows in the $950 to $975 range just as recently as late August. And that's what I was talking about at the start of this video. When you're assessing the value of a book, you can't assess it based off of an auction sale because there's a lot of factors that go into that. Is it a new seller? How are the pictures? How long was the book actually up for auction? Was it three days? Was it five days? Was it seven? Was it 11? All of these play a role because if a member the same week is willing to spend $1,000 on the same book because they want to get it right now, buy it now, that is a fair market value. So this just means up your search game. Don't just look for buy it nows. Don't just make offers. If you are paying attention and looking for those auctions, if you are looking a little bit deeper, you may be able to find a great discount. We are reporting again a 25% discount below fair market value for really a Bronze Age key that is pretty major. Now we do have The Marvels, the second Captain Marvel movie coming out in November of this year. There was a new international poster that released earlier this week, but other than that, there's not a whole lot of new news about this movie. Uh, if you consider the upcoming slate of the MCU in the near future, however, this is kind of it for a while. This movie comes out in November. Deadpool 3 was scheduled to come out in May, but that is no longer on the release calendar while they're waiting for the strikes to sort out. After that, you've got Captain America Brave New World, which is currently set for July 2024, but who knows how that's going to be affected by the strike either. So as far as MCU movies go, this looks like it's going to be it for the near future. And we can say the same thing about number seven on the list with all new Wolverine number one. We chatted about this book just last week, and we told the community that it was selling for prices that had us interested, $30 average sales, a high 9.8 sale of $77, but wait... That was at auction. We reported this book hitting in the $40 range seven days ago at a 9.8, and someone bought one at a buy it now for $100 the same week. So this book is the debut of X-23 in Wolverine's classic costume. And there's no new news this week, but we are still seeing a 413% increase in copies sold. The fair market value of this being $100 that's a no-brainer. Again, it's the type of thing where this just keeps going up, and I just believe this is a great book to keep getting in on. If you can get it less than that, that's great. If you can get raw copies and grade them, I mean, really, there are definitely copies out there, but $100 still doesn't seem outlandish for this book. This is a prime example about how some comic keys in this market are only going to fall so Far. And in this particular case, it's doubled in seven days. So I got to hit the subscribe button because we're going to be covering it all along the way. So you know when to throw the money down. So the news is that the writer strike is over and James Gunn is already spiking more books with his tweets. Number six on the list, Superman for all seasons, number one, $5 average sales and a high 9.8 for $140. A 400% increase in copies sold, seeing DC specs starting to creep back up. What's going on? Well, I was excited. Uh, James Gunn tweeted about this comic book just last week, specifically the new Absolute Edition, which is gorgeous and very much worth looking into. James Gunn said, Just received this stunningly gorgeous Absolute Edition of Superman for All Seasons, one of my favorite Superman stories and a huge influence on legacy and a strangely perfect bookend with All-Star Superman. 
The late, great Tim Sale's artwork and Bjarn Hansen's watercolor work have never looked better, nor have Clark and Ma and Pa. Jeff Loeb's elegant, confident story still sings. And uh, I agree. I, I have this exact same book that James Gunn just tweeted about. This absolute edition is gorgeous. This is my single favorite Superman comic of all time. I have loved this book for 15 plus years. I have told numerous people to give this a shot when they tell me specifically that Superman's boring, that he's lame, that he's too powerful, etc. You know, you know what I mean. Everyone says that. Read this book. It's, it's very much worth it. It's heartfelt and beautiful. And it's the same creative team as Batman Long Halloween. And for my money, I think this book's a little more fun. It's a little better, in my opinion. $5 average sales with a high 9.8 of $140 sounds extreme because it is. But when you look at the census count, there's only five 9.8s on there. So there's a very low supply. And with any demand, members are willing to pay an inflated amount. And I don't think you should. This is a book that you got to know. Look out for in the dollar bins. Look to see if you already have it. Get it graded because there's only five copies on the census. This is a book that you got to get done yourself because there's going to be an increase that's going to be staggering, especially after this week with James Gunn tweeting. We have a repeat offender here at number five on the list. This is a relatively new book, Wolverine number 37, the Thank You Greg Capullo variant that just came out a few weeks ago. This is the second repeat offender this week, which doesn't happen very often. We just got done telling you about X-23. Well, now we're telling you about... Greg Capullo's reintroduction to Marvel, and clearly it landed with a splash. This Wolverine cover is hitting $50 average sales. High raw sales are at $80, and I suspect that's going to break the $150 mark when 9.8s hit because a lot of these came damaged. This was a thank you variant with a intention of just hooking up stores, but not the intention of getting it to them in the pristine quality in which they left. It's still a 400% increase in copies sold. The market is speaking. This is really, really amazing. We know that there's between four and 5,000 copies of this book out there. A lot of shops got two copies, but really, everyone on eBay, people are just paying a lot of money for this because they want it. What do you think about this being done over at Marvel? Let me know in the comment section below because I was already hyped to see Greg Capullo do Moon Knight covers. You know, the solicitations are coming in. So if you're excited about Capullo covers, this isn't the only one that you need to bank on. There's a lot coming down the pipeline, and I'm stoked. You know I'm a big New 52 fan. And I'm an even bigger New 52 fan, so shut your mouth, Tom. <laughs> Let's move on. Let's move on. Well, now we're at number four on the list with Star Wars Thrawn number six. This is an origin story that's canonical based off of the novel, and we have a $25 average sale, $130 for a 9.8, and an increase of copies sold of 433%. This is a strong number because of his impact on Ahsoka Tano, clearly building him up to be the next big bad in the Star Wars mythos. I guess when Disney bought Star Wars back in 2012, I think, they realized that the uh, that Thrawn was obviously a great candidate for a future villain in this storyline, but Thrawn's most popular books are his first appearance books from back in the 90s that are no longer canon. So they commissioned Timothy Zahn, the original creator of Thrawn in the Heir to the Empire novels. He wrote a new Thrawn origin novel in 2017 just called Star Wars Thrawn, and it was adapted to a six-issue comic run the very next year, and we're seeing issue six here on the list at number four. 340 plus dollar nine eights were the heights. This book selling for 130 right now is another clear example of comics only getting so low before members say this is the time to buy. With only one episode left of Ahsoka Tano, we really have to establish how big bad Thrawn is. A lot of the people that have been paying attention to Star Wars know, but the people just watching on Disney Plus haven't really felt his full power. We know he's going to be the big bad in the next big movie, but right now, this could just be the calm before the storm on this book. It's going to really depend on how they wrap this season up, which I've been a big fan of. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. While we tell you about number three on the list, because... We did not call this spec. We were wrong. We actually talked about this comic over two years ago on the live show. We're talking about Snatched, number one from Scout Comics. Uh, Tom described it as Breaking Bad with hair. This is like Breaking Bad, with hair. but with hair. <laughs> Which is uh, extremely accurate. This couldn't happen on anything really other than comic books. And then I went on to say, I can't imagine them making a TV show based on this. Can't imagine them making a TV show based on this. And you fast forward a couple years, and that's exactly what happened. This book was just optioned this past week by Warner Brothers TV, which means if this does go through, we might see this show up on HBO. The violent world of hair trafficking. 
It's a thing. And this is a comic that everyone's got to read. It's superb. And since the option news dropped this past week, there's been an increase of over 50 copies that flew off the eBay shelves, landing this book so high on our list. All right. So while we're reporting on $4 average sales, we did have a high sale of $20 for number one, and we are seeing sets of one through four selling for $40. Now, keep in mind, option does not necessarily mean that we're going to see it. Scout Comics has had many, many projects optioned. Once Our Land has been optioned, The Recount, Solar Flare, The Mall, and Forever Maps. But that's not to just pick on Scout Comics. We've also seen image comics like Witches get optioned. These are the type of things that we hear the word optioned and it doesn't necessarily mean don't buy or it's going to go up. This is just one of those be prepared. Something is in the works. Check your back issue bin. Know the cover. Scout out for it, no pun intended, in those long boxes at a convention. If you can get this book for under $10 in high grade, I say go for it. These are the books that you want to start to hunt for. But I wouldn't go nuts on a 9.8 copy unless you're just going to pay to play and risk it. If this does actually become a show, it, you can expect to see something dark and gritty, definitely in the mold of Breaking Bad, but with hair. Regardless, I think it's worth a read, and it's only four issues, so you're not going to waste a whole lot of time, even if you don't like it. I also want to give a big shout-out to the shirt that you're wearing, Swamp Thing, looking Dope, Bernie Wrightson, which also made the Trending 20, and with the help of my brother Sean from Carnivore Comics, we are bringing back to press Swamp Thing number one. Foil logo variant to New York City Comic Con. Join me on the best new place to buy and sell collectibles, whatnot. If you use the link in the description, you get a $10 off your first purchase and you can put it towards this comic book that I'm going to be releasing that very weekend. That's super cool, Tom. But if only we had one of the original copy in foil, that would be incredible. Ooh, I like that idea. Creeping me out with that face, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on, please. Move on to possibly my favorite comic book out right now. Technically, it's not out right now. It's been on a brief sabbatical for about a year. We're talking about the Department of Truth number one from 2020 that is landing here at number two on the list. Best news of the week. Everyone needs to read Department of Truth. It is one of the best comics to have ever been created. And we got some news from Jimmy T. Papa T, the Lord of the Onions. Tom is talking about James Tynan IV, my personal favorite writer in comic books right now, who just released a newsletter on his Tiny Onion substack, which Tom and I are both literal card-carrying members of. No big deal. But in the newest Tiny Update newsletter that he sent out last week, he just so happened to slip in an offhand reference to Department of Truth while promoting his upcoming book, Universal Monsters Dracula Number 1, which I am beyond excited for. Uh, he did mention about Department of Truth, however, that although it is on a brief sabbatical, he is excited to get back into writing the TV adaptation of Department of Truth now that the Writers Guild strike is over. This right here bodes well, causing a absurd uptick in copies sold of 300%. And he also mentioned that at New York City Comic Con, he's going to have a very special exclusive at his table. Nope, Tom, you're lying. He's not doing any of that. Don't tell the people about that because you have to get me one. Ooh, never mind. But we do have sales to report on this issue, seeing $20 average sales, and 9 eighths are selling for, like, cost right now, $30. And this is a book that I'm hunting for at that price. And, Ryan, you're sitting in front of two copies that you yourself specced on. When Ryan is specking on 9 eighths, comic fam, you need to listen. I don't spec on books, but I have that much faith in James Tynan and this comic in particular. I bought these uh, for 60 bucks a piece last year, so I'm still I'm waiting for the price to creep back up before I even consider selling. But honestly, I'm, I'm just glad to have some of these in my uh, very small slab collection. Knowing that you paid for those books at a rate that are double what they are right now, how do you feel? I think I feel what most comic collectors are feeling right now in this market, but I have... Uh, very strong faith in uh, not only James Tynan, but this property in particular. And I think once one of his things actually hits the screen, uh, my eyes are on something is killing the children, by the way, Netflix, where are you? Uh, once anything pops off from him, I think we're going to see a rush for people to option every other thing he's written because he's a badass. It's another one of those auctions 24, but to buy it now literally the day before was $80. So this is one of those situations where if you are hunting for auctions, you may get a screaming deal 
that's the proof right there. I didn't know any better last year, and I bought it now for sixty bucks. So I'm feeling the I'm feeling the pinch. I believe in James Tynion the fourth. He's also one of my all time favorite writers. And as soon as one of these options status comics takes off on the big screen, it's going to cause a domino effect, and people will be hunting for wind. Mark my words. That's a good book, too, but I'm hoping for a nice house on the lake movie myself. Now, it is my birthday, and I'm not telling you that you have to support this show and give us an excuse to send you comics every month, but damn it, this is a freaking great box. In October, we have American Psycho number one. I got a Christian Bale photo cover going out, one per box, and we teamed up with Dan Quintana for the very first time on Concrete Jungle, Bad Omens number one. We have two versions of that cover going out, guaranteed, one per box, one per or the other. ComicTom101.com to join the community. It's a monthly subscription for a cheaper price, but for the first time ever, we not only have international open, but you can do a one-time purchase to just try us out. And the number one most trending comic book in the world, holy hell, it's almost a repeat offender. We have Skybound's Void Rivals number one. The Energon universe has taken over, not just the trending 10, but the trending 20 this week. We did mention Void Rivals number four early on the list, but now we're talking number one, the first issue from back in July of this year. Again, we're still seeing $4 average raw sales with a low CGC 9.8 of $35, but earlier this week we saw 9.8 also go for $81. The people who know what's going on are definitely picking this book up, which is why we saw an auction for this at a 9.8 go for $35 and a buy it now go for $81. This is one of those books that you could probably still find out at regular retailers for cover price. I know there's been a second and a third print of it. And I don't think we have, especially as a local comic shop, we don't have enough readers who are in on this. They don't really know what's going on in the Energon universe. Yes, all of the people online, all of the people paying attention to spec news understand Energon's big. We know G.I. Joe, we know Transformers. All of this stuff is a massive thing that's coming up soon, but I still don't think there are enough readers, so I expect these books to spike again after issue number six when Image issues a graphic novel of the first few issues, and people are going to start clamoring for this early stuff. $35 $35 at auction for a 9.8 and over double for a buy it now price shows at the fair market value. If you want to get it under that, you need to keep your eBay search on. You need to be up on whatnot, waiting for those sudden death streams to take place, waiting for those books to be dropped at auction so you can score it for 25 or even 50% under FM. And again, when you look back at Void Rivals number one, it was not marketed as a Transformers stealth introduction to this Energon universe. It was kept pretty hush-hush until the last possible minute, which is why we're seeing a 300% increase in copies sold of this first appearance of a Transformer in this new universe. It happens here in Void Rivals. But we also have, like we've said before, Transformers number one does drop this coming new comic book day. After that, however, we've got Duke number one, which comes out later in December. That's written by Joshua Williamson, which is going to be a the formation of this G.I. Joe universe. And then later in 2024, January, we've got Cobra Commander number one. So I think this whole universe is starting to slowly fill in. How do you guys feel about this? Because as someone who didn't grow up on Transformers or G.I. Joe, I have never been more excited to dive into these IPs themselves, seeing the ash can at San Diego Comic-Con has me so excited. This book is going to be a masterpiece. And not to mention the fact that we have New York City Comic-Con weeks away. You think Skybound isn't going to do a repeat of what they did at San Diego with ash cans, possible panel variants? The hype may just be beginning. After the Marvel run ended, IDW and Dreamwave did their best to try and pick up the Transformers torch, and I don't think they did it right. Unfortunately, they were not very popular, and right now, Image is doing the best way to build this universe, and I've never been more excited. Yeah, Skybound's got me on the hook. I'm I'm all in on the Energon universe. I have never seen or read or watched any sort of G.I. Joe before in my life. I'm getting Duke. I'm getting Cobra Commander. I'm getting Transformers next week. I've been reading Void Rivals this whole time, so I, yeah, I'm all in. I'm excited. Let me know what you think in the comment section below, and... As always, Geek Responsibly. Enough said.